Hi everybody, my name is Beverly Terrell Deutsch and I'm here today to read to you from my new book for World Read Aloud Day. The title of my book is Running Scared and it's for readers ages 9 to 12. It's a story about 10-year-old Gregory Gray who was in a terrible car accident about a year ago with his dad and his dad was killed in the accident. Now Gregory finds that he's not able to walk past the spot where the accident occurred. He's too afraid. The problem is that the spot lies directly on Gregory's route to school. But he can't walk past the spot. So instead of going the normal way to school with all the other kids in the townhouse complex, Gregory's walking around the block, the long way around to school. It's a long way and it takes a long time. And he's often late for school, so he's getting detentions for his lateness. He's not doing well in any of his schoolwork, except mathematics, that is. Gregory loves math. He loves numbers. And his grade six teacher tells him that he believes Gregory is a math genius. But part of Gregory's difficulty with walking the long way around to school is that every day he has to walk past the yard of a great big scary dog. And this dog barks at him and chases him inside the fence every day. This dog is big and yellow and he has a great big ruff of thick fur around his neck. He's so big and powerful looking that he really looks like a lion. In fact, in his mind, Gregory calls him the lion dog. Now with the help of his best friend Matt, and a new girl in his class, Tisha, and her little sister, Tamara, Gregory and these friends, they work together to try many different strategies to help Gregory overcome his fear of walking past the spot. Unfortunately, nothing works, and ultimately, it's Gregory's own courage and his determination, plus his brilliance in math, that help him overcome his fear. But right now, I'd like to read to you a section in the book where Gregory is forced to confront the lion dog. Let's see what happens. Gregory crossed Simcoe Street, dreading as usual the sudden rush of the big yellow lion dog. But it was nowhere in sight. Then he saw why. The fence over at the far corner, that flimsy fence was crushed and trampled down. The dog was gone. He's loose, thought Gregory, and his heart began to thump. In his imagination, the dog's long white fangs grew to ten times their size, and he could almost feel them sinking in. Gregory started walking fast. He wanted to run, but he was afraid to, knowing the effect running head on the dog. If he was anywhere around, that would surely make it so much worse. Walking as fast as he could, occasionally tripping over his own feet, Gregory reached the corner. Even though he was no safer there than when he'd been standing across the street from where the dog lived, he felt safer because he was on Clark Street. He was almost home. It was then that he heard barking and yells, yells that turned into terrified screams. They were coming from the townhouse complex. Gregory ran toward the sound, his backpack pounding against his shoulders with every step. He rounded the entrance pillars and saw the big dog ahead of him, running full speed up the middle of the road. Further on, 20 paces ahead were Tisha and Tamara, running away and screaming in fear. Even as he watched, Tamara tripped and fell headlong onto the road, the rough tarmac raking her bare knees and hands. Tisha stopped to help her sister and was screaming, half dragging the younger girl to her feet, trying to run backward away from the dog. Gregory skidded to a stop. He felt sick. Fear and dread washed over him. But then, almost without thinking, he was running again toward the scene. This couldn't happen. He couldn't let it happen. He reached up, flung off his backpack, and ran faster than he had ever run in his life. His legs felt strong, and he lengthened his stride. He'd heard his mom say, that's what you do in races. That's what you do when you have to win. He was nearly upon them, 
and Gregory heard himself shouting, No! No! The dog paused in his chase and turned toward Gregory, suddenly standing quite still. Gregory stopped too. The dog's long pink tongue lolled out of his mouth and his chest heaved. No! Gregory was panting almost as hard as the dog. Sweat dribbled down his forehead and into his eyes, but he didn't dare move. They stood there, boy and dog, facing each other, a standoff that dragged on as the seconds ticked past. Then, with his heart pounding and his hands trembling, Gregory took a step forward. It was an aggressive move, he knew it, aggressive and possibly provocative, but he had no choice. From the corner of his eye, he saw Tisha drag Tamara to her feet, and together they ran down the road and up the steps to their front door. Tamara was crying, but Gregory blocked it out. He was looking straight into the face of the giant dog. No, he shouted as loud as he could this time and took another step forward. The dog faltered, suddenly seemed unsure of himself. With a flash of insight, Gregory recognized the fear in the dog's eyes, in his whole demeanor. But then it was gone, and they stood there, staring at each other, neither moving, two statues in the middle of the road. Thanks for listening. I hope that wasn't too scary for you, and happy reading. But just before I go, if you happen to notice this little tiny frog pin that I'm wearing, you might be wondering, why does she have a frog pin on? Well, if you want to know, you have to read the book. Bye for now.